morning, good morning. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. We are Highway 40 West down and down. On the ears, Rabbit Ears Pass. Haven't been up here in a couple of minutes. Nice to be back. A negative 15 below zero. Nice cool temp. The time is 0743. Mountain Standard Time. Snowmobile Haven up here. Haven or Heaven, however you want to say it. We hit 30 below over by Kremlin. Here I'll show you. Nice cool below zero degree, minus 30. We're down to 14 now, negative 14. We started at 4.30 this morning, not driving. We didn't start driving until 5.15. A little break action here. Um, you can do that pretty good when it's below zero. Yeah, I did a bonehead move this morning. I backed underneath my trailer. I lowered down. They 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 lubed up the truck yesterday and serviced it, and the uh, fifth wheel plate had grease on it, so I didn't want to like back under it and slide all the grease off to the front so I lowered the airbags crept up underneath it and then raised the airbags back up and then I go back in and lock the pin I forgot to lock the pin this morning oh, bonehead moves so I go to drive away and the trainer goes clunk clunk like man no damage or anything like that it, that kind of stuff happens once in a while but um what was hard about it was that line, the sign flashing on that bus. Mask required, mask required. Anyway, um, because it was, what was it, five below zero down there in Denver this morning? So the crank was really uh, tough to crank. Anyway, I, um, I had about 7,000 pounds. Thank God it wasn't like a beer load. I would have been cranking forever in low gear. Anyway, I, I dropped the airbags back down, cranked up a little bit, got the rails underneath it, the frame rails, and then raised the airbags up, cranked back down the landing gear, and then dropped the uh, airbags again, and then slid the fifth wheel underneath there, locked it in place, and cranked the landing gear up. It took about 10 minutes. <laughs> I was like, what a, what a moron. But, you know, things happen sometimes. Now we got 21 below zero. Kind of bounces around in areas. This is a mountain pass that, if you get up here in a snowstorm, you can almost guarantee blizzard-like conditions because it's uh, champagne snow, a fluffy light powder, so it just flies everywhere. You get a little wind and it just makes it awesome, <laughs> I think, anyway. See, now we're back to 15 below. See you in a bit. 
so yesterday I was somewhere. Where was I? Oh, I guess we were, yeah, I-70 eastbound and down. Rabbit Ears West Summit, one mile. Um, the road was really rough. I'm like, man, this road was bad. And I haven't dealt with it in a while, but it was a temporary situation of why the road was so rough. There's a few here already that I've noticed, and that is um, now we're back to 20 below. Uh, what am I trying to say? Oh, frost heaves. So you get moisture underneath the highway here and then it gets so cold that these cracks right here you have um, the the ground freezes the moisture underneath and creates a little bump a ridge a boom and that's called a frost heave there's um There was a big one on Vail Pass. They did some work to it. It's about three quarters of the way up or a quarter from the way down uh, from the top of the pass. It, uh, on the westbound lanes and they mitigated it a little bit but it's still there, but not so much anymore. It used to be really bad. It would, like, launch you. They had signs telling you. It was funny, the people that watch, the people who ignore the signs <laughs> hit that frost to even get launched. But, yeah, I haven't dealt with it in a while, and, and so I was like, wow. It's, uh, initially, it clicked. I go, what, why is this road so rough? And then, boom, the frost heave popped into my head. I'm like, oh, that's right. That's why. So now we're at seven below zero. It's one cool thing about the mountains is you cruise along and you can watch the temperature bounce all over the place. This is a balmy six degrees, minus six, sorry. Now we're at five. So we are on our way to Steamboat Springs, and then Grand Junction for some wind supply loads. So I got in there, I was thinking that I was going to have some time off because Wendy sent me a text stating the mechanics need my truck. And I was like, wow, they, uh, they don't usually ask for your truck. And I was 8,000 over on a service. So I tried to get out of it, and, and I asked Wendy, do you have any loads? And she goes, yeah. And then she goes, I need to ask you your expertise on something. I'm like, okay. And I was thinking, you know, mountains and snow because that's what I know and she goes yeah uh, I have a load going up to steamboat that nobody wants she goes can you do it for me because I know that doesn't bother you up there I'm like well yeah absolutely but they need to do my truck, so let me go see. So I tried to go, hey, can you do my truck later? And they're like, no, it needs to get done now. And I'm like, all right. They actually got it right in. I think it was two and a half hours, you know, a B service, lube and oil and all that good stuff. So normally what I would do is I would leave in the evening and then get somewhere over here in Steamboat and spend the night. And they're not quite opened yet, the, the plumbing supply place. 
Um, but they will be when I get there. So that was the reason for leaving so early this morning. But I got 15 minutes behind, roughly, because uh, my trailer detachment it looks icy right here. If in doubt, use truck ram. If you're going uh, eastbound, that means you'll be climbing this hill. When they say chains, I advise it. It's a good 7% all the way. Depends on what you're dealing with, of course. As far as weight, temperature, tires, all that good stuff. We have about 6,000 pounds on board. So we're fairly light. Uh, I was surprised when I went through Vale Eisenhower. Um, I did that video on it where they have you chain up when it's wet. Total California situation. In other words, California highway situation, uh, how they deal with chain laws. It gets wet and they want you to put chains on. Since they migrated from California to Colorado, they're messing that up really good. Really, really good chain. Anyway, um, there was more de more snow in Denver. And going down the hill from, basically from, where was it? Uh, Idaho Springs on down. Well, maybe Georgetown on down. We got about eight to ten inches of snow at the yard quality, or the quality yard. I'm using my brakes here and there a little bit, only because I'm optimizing my speed. Since we're light, we could play around like that. If we were heavy, yeah, we wouldn't be doing that. We'd pick our gear and put our flashers on and just take our time. Not worried about the road in the least. Um, these temperatures, there's Steamboat Springs. Yeah, the roads are just fine. Now we got six below. So I haven't seen it 30 below in a long time. I mean, it's been... I was talking to another driver, Mike. He used to work for Quality. I think he drives his own truck now, but... He's from Wisconsin. And, oh, you guys always say it gets cold up in Grand County and yeah you're full of BS and I go dude I've been there when it's been 40 below you know so I I was there he didn't believe me so I sent him a you know past almanac or whatever it is past temperature readings and he's like holy crap oh my god but it wasn't lying that's why I think Frazier was in in cahoots. Frazier gets colder than Granby and Winter Park. Not sure why, but it does. As the ice box of the nation. I don't think they got it, but great. see you in Steamboat.
I was glad to see that car that jumped onto the highway. It didn't mosey on like this yellow truck and this other truck. We have negative 21. Steamboat Mountain is there to the right, ski resort. Like some of the best snow in the world to ski on. And we could never figure out, it's like, oh, there's a big storm coming, you know, and, and Steamboat is west of Grand Lake. So the storm's coming from the west. We're like, we're going to get a big old storm. Nice, you know. And then, like, Steamboat, two foot of snow. Granby, three inches. Or Grand Lake, three inches. It's like this mountain steals all the snow. It's weird. Kind of jacked up. We still get our snow, don't get me wrong, but man, in certain storms, this mountain here, Steamboat, will just steal all the snow. Now we're at 20 below, which is about right. I mean, usually in the winter, it's 20 below. So that when it's 30 degrees outside and sunny, you are literally in a t shirt. That's a 50 degree temperature swing. You can see how cold it is, all the exhaust. It's like we're up in Siberia. So there's a secret, because I've got to unload these pallets. It's not a secret. Um, if it's going to be 15, 20 below zero, you're in a trailer, it's going to be cold. In seven pallets, you're going to be there for a while, probably half an hour. So what I do is I keep a pair of gloves in my jacket under my arms, like under my armpits, and stick them there. That way it holds, stays put, sort of, while you move around. Then you wear, you're wearing a pair of gloves. Then when your gloves get really cold on your hands, you switch. <laughs> it's kind of cold, too, because you put the gloves under your armpits. It's like, brr. You let those warm back up. Uh, the ones you have on are keeping your hands warm, but then they gradually cool down. And do it again. That's how you do it, instead of sitting there freezing your hands off after a while. Because it hurts when it gets that cold. Like, a uh, a bone hurt. Let's get downtown. Poof! And the hot springs right there to the right. There's a few hot springs running around. Steamboat Springs. It is 8.06 a.m. And look at all the traffic in a small mountain. Colorado Mountain Town. So you have your locals, but then you have a lot of touristas, skiers. If you ever want to ski excellent snow, this is where you do it. The boat. Three eighty nine for biodiesel there, California, five twenty a gallon. Could be worse. England's like seven dollars a gallon. Seven dollars a gallon for diesel in England. We 
have 11 below zero, so it won't be too bad. another little it's a little pond with a spring inside it it never freezes like moving water is a lot harder to freeze of course than standing water that's how we get by with hauling beer it doesn't freeze And we got negative 11. If I was hauling beer right now, the vibrations of the truck would keep it from freezing. I was going to show you the pond, but I think I already passed it. It might be on the video. It's on the left hand side and I'm 100% sure we passed it. That's a big building gone up. Uh, you want an excellent road trip to this highway right here. Like to Steamboat Lake, Pearl Lake State Parks. I used to work over here with WM and the, the manager of the shop goes, what the heck are you doing? Taking the scenic route? And I was like, man, it's beautiful up there. And that's coming from a mountain man's point of perspective. <laughs> this this highway right here, just keep on going. I don't know the name of it. Is this right here? Yeah. Copper Ridge. That truck is right there. Elk River Road is what it says. Thank you, buddy. <sighs> so it looks like it's going to be about 10 below zero here that we work in. What is going on here? Well, he figures out what he's doing. We already know what we're doing. Somebody's moving. He's not even in his truck. A little kid over here we gotta watch out for. Put it on our flashers and it says nine below zero. We're good. We're good. We're gonna unload right here. This um, place here, which I don't know if they'll need it today, but they have chains on their forklift. <laughs> it's cool because they gotta climb that little hill. Boom, there it is. We'll see you in a bit. Okay. It wasn't bad. Never had to change my gloves. It's minus four now. It took us about 30 minutes. So now we are off to Grand Junction. Let's get this thing. We got to kick it into gear. Say we're driving. Alrighty. There's rock and roll. Okay. We're finishing up our run here. Steamboat. 
three Grand Junctions. This last one's Wind Water. And then we'll do a 34. So how about them truckers in Canada, huh? They're really showing their stuff. <laughs> yeah, you piss off the Canadians, you they're usually the most law-abiding people around. You piss them off, you definitely created a problem. And I stand behind the Canadian truckers 100 percent because why well, I, I am a trucker. I believe in freedom. Get vaxxed if you want, but don't mandate it. And it looks like, I think, what will happen is it will start spreading. And the people have the power. The people in government think they can just do what they want, especially that uh, chicken. Not Mike the Choke Chicken, but the Trudeau Chicken. Uh, they to push their, their ways onto other people. And I, and I like how like the mainstream media calls them uh, insurrectionists, you know, save, either destroying our democracy and, you know, everything they could think of. But yet when BLM went around and, and burnt and a lot of people died and destroyed everything in the summer of 20, it was mostly peaceful protests, you know, they, uh, <laughs> absolute joke. Anyway, yeah, um, they're going to get their arse handed to them, I believe. And about time, too. They're, they're just using this fear-mongering and, you know, all this stuff. You know, they, they're worried about this COVID, but yet they kill babies by the millions and don't care. Care less. Rejoice and stand up and, and sing about it, but yet somebody who's been around for 80, 90 years dies, then it's all a, a time of mourning, you know, it's like priorities are all whacked, I think. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're going to do a break here, probably load up in the morning and then uh, hang out for till Saturday morning, today's Wednesday. And then we'll uh, head out, maybe out to California or something, on a kind of a long run. Anyway, we'll call this video good now. Thanks again for riding shotgun with Mountain Man Mike. Until the next time, enjoy. Peace! Nice and warm over here. Not like this morning. See ya!